Hello beer nerds, this is Ryan from Beer by the Numbers. As a big beer nerd who spends way too much time inside, I love watching movies. All kinds of movies. Horror movies, dramas, comedies, documentaries, I love them all. But as a big beer nerd, I can't help but allow my obsession with beer to invade my movie watching experience. Today I'm going to be counting down five of the most successful beer related movies of all time, but I'm going to need some help from some true movie buffs. Today I'm joined by Pip and Kay from the great channel Review and Brew. These guys do an amazing job breaking down classic movies and they combined that with some great beer reviews. I also help them with one great movie review on their channel. And if you want to see that video, follow the annotation on screen now or click the link in the description below. Without any further ado, let's get started. Pip and Kay, how are you guys doing today? Thanks for having us on your show. Kay and I do love drinking beers and watching movies, so we were excited for this project. Unfortunately, we learned from watching these films that Hollywood generally views beer drinkers as half-witted losers and drunken idiots. Out of all the movies today, this one probably fits the most with modern beer culture. Although instead of categorizing us beer drinkers as unintelligent partiers that can't keep a job, this wants to put us in the stereotypical, over-emotional hipster category where your whole life is just romantic problems and you have no other aspirations than your sex life. The movie has just the right amount of known actors for you to say throughout the beginning, oh, hey isn't that the guy? Or What's that actress's name? This movie is full of small talk and slow progression. It took me until the halfway point to figure out any kind of loose plot. I guess this is a character study about two co-workers at a craft brewery, both in separate relationships who are a little too flirty with each other. If you call putting your hands in someone else's food flirting, everything that happens in this one and a half hour movie can be easily summed up in one or two sentences, which I will not do so as not to spoil the ending, or lack of an ending. They drank real beer during the shoots and the dialogue was improvised to provide you with the feeling of realistic conversations. The lead actress later admitted that during most of the filming they were pretty much hammered the entire movie. This film had a budget of one million dollars and its gross income was four hundred seven thousand one hundred dollars. Ouch. With the tagline, no gut, no glory, we can pretty much tell what kind of film Beer League is. Writer and headlining actor Artie Lang plays Artie Devonzo, a jobless middle-aged man who smokes like a chimney and drinks like a fish, or some sort of weird chimney fish. Artie loves his baseball league, yet every year is confronted with his old high school rival from the other team. During a fight at the first game of the season, both teams end up in the local police department. The sheriff is tired of their shenanigans, so he declares that whichever team does the worst during the season will have to leave the league for good. This convinces this group of misfits to shape up in order to beat the opposing team. Beer League's estimated cost? $2,800,000, and it only grossed $475,000, and that made this movie a huge flop. It's understandable why it was not well received for the masses. For a movie that only came out in 2006, it had a lot of dated discriminatory jokes that may have been a little more forgivable in an 80s flick. In fact, while watching it, I thought for sure this film must have come out around the same time as Porky's, which is surprisingly less racist or homophobic. Next up we have Beer for My Horses. Not quite a beer movie, actually it's more like a movie about meth. But it's got beer in the title, so there you go. And the protagonists are beer drinking rednecks, and you probably have to be a crippling alcoholic to even enjoy this movie, so I'm pretty sure it's qualified to be on our beer related list. Toby Keith plays a country cop who is pretty much a dick to his girlfriend. But that's A-OK -okay because his high school sweetheart is back in town. So, you know, who cares about that other chick? Anywho, the new girl gets kidnapped by meth lords, so Toby Keith and his cop buddies go on a road trip looking for the kidnapped girl. With a whopping 0% critic review on Rotten Tomatoes, Beer For My Horses uses a similar setup and payoff formula as primetime television shows like My Name Is Earl. It has jokes that may make someone in middle school laugh as long as the kid wasn't too bright. 
The gross sales for this one was $666,000, a very suspicious number. Makes me wonder who sold their soul to get this movie made, and why. Bob and Doug McKenzie, played by Dave Thomas and Rick Morandis, are two bumbling but lovable characters from the Great White North. Originally a sketch comedy routine from SCTV, these two took their mouse in a bottle skit to the big screen. In an attempt to get free beer from the Elsinore Brewery, they end up running into a couple of job opportunities at said brewery. After learning that the owner had been murdered, they must help the owner's daughter to find out what evil plans have been going on behind closed doors. Strange Brew has just the right amount of silly humor without becoming overly dumb. Dave Thomas and Rick Morandis are terrific at embracing their roles and have cemented the Canadian stereotype in popular culture. After all, they are the ones who coined the term Hooser. With a budget of $4 million, they came close to doubling it in the box office with $7,035,000. When Johann Wolf House, a heavy drinking German restaurant owner, passes away, his two sons are left with the task of taking his ashes back to Germany. They meet a man who brings them down to the secretive beer fest, where his grandfather wanted his ashes displayed, along with the other beer drinking champions. To their dismay, the brothers find that their German cousins consider them traitors and accuse their grandfather of running away to America with the best beer recipe in all of Munich. The brothers challenge these men to one of the drinking contests, but are crushed and sent back home. They decide to assemble the best team of beer drinkers they know and return to Germany with the first American team for Beer Fest. In the movie, the drinking challenges end with a glass boot called Das Boot, which would actually translate to The Boat in German. The correct title for boot-shaped glass is Bierstiefer. Written by the Broken Lizard comedy troupe, they based the movie off of experiences they had when first forming the troupe during college. It also took references from a drinking challenge they had during their promotion of Super Troopers. They would include little Easter eggs about their early work of Super Troopers throughout this movie. This gross movie, oh, I mean the total gross of this movie, was $20,159,000, and their budget was only $17,500,000 making this a successful movie at the box office, but perhaps a forgettable DVD on the shelf. So there we are, five of the biggest beer-related movies of all time. A big thanks to Pip and Kay for joining me today to go over these great and not so great beer movies. Be sure to follow the links below and head over to Review and Brew to see the movie I helped them review, and also check out all their other great videos. What's your favorite beer-related movie? Let me know in the comments section below. Once again, this has been Ryan with Beer by the Numbers, and I'll see you in the next video.